Hello, my friends, family, and followers. Today is a beautiful day in Arkansas, and welcome to Blessed Beyond Measure. Um, we absolutely love taking things that were already in a place and repurposing them to what we need. Um, we don't always do it in the most glorious manner, but we do it um, functionality. So, when we moved here, we moved without all of our chickens, without our goats, without all the things that we had in New Mexico. And we moved kind of empty-handed in that manner, but we were blessed recently with five beautiful already laying hens from a family that we got to bless with our John Deere 2025R. Um, so it was a mutual yay for us, right? And that is what community is all about, right? So here we are on YouTube community, sharing what we know and sharing it with others. Well, we do the same locally. We share what we have. And if everybody shares, well, it kind of feels like kindergarten class, right? Everybody gets more because everybody shares. So today, sharing is, <laughs> sharing is caring. So today, we are going to take what used to be a package box at the end of the driveway, and we're gonna make it a chicken coop. So let me show you what we've got. This was a package box, and my helper here, Madeline, Madeline, say hi. Hi. She's gonna help me refurbish this package box into a chicken coop. What she's doing right now is she's picking off some of the rotted wood. What's really neat about this package box is that if you grab this handle right here and you pull it down, the bottom pops up. Let me show you from the side view so that you can get an idea here how it looks open. Okay. The fun part is, is that we will put the hen boxes in here and um, you'll be able to simply open it up, grab the eggs, clean out any poop, close it back up, and voila, package box becomes a chicken coop. Now, how do the chickens get in there? That's the next question, right? So what we're going to do is over here on the side, we're going to cut in a chicken hole right here on the left-hand side, and we're gonna put in what's called a chicken ladder or chicken ramp, whichever way you wanna call it. If you take a look underneath that lovely package box, see the end of it is right there. So just enough space. They have wire in here already. We're gonna add some chicken wire, but just enough space for us to add a hole right here for them to go up and into said chicken house. Now, these are my two helpers. Josiah, say hi. Hi. And they're gonna help me scrape off the yucky stuff. We're gonna put on a couple of new sides onto um, the box where it just was squishy all the way through to protect the animals from invaders and from weather. And then we're gonna paint it the same color that we're planning on painting our house. And that's just some of the things to do. So hang in there for the ride. We're gonna enjoy this and um, we'll keep you posted. Another one of my very big helpers, he is my oldest son, Solomon. He is going to cut out some of the pieces that we need to refurbish this box into a chicken house. While he's doing that, I'm going to show you what we had considered building this chicken house out of first. So while clearing all of this beautiful property from what we affectionately call the Arkansas jungle, we were able to cut down several trees that were either in the way, um, dead, dying or just too many of them so that we could thin so that things could look healthy. Let me show you what it looks like. This is what it looks like now. Okay, we kept all of the trees that were nice and healthy and straight. We didn't keep any that were leaning, dead or dying because there's no sense in that. This is where our chickens are right now, as you can see. And let me show you what it used to look like. I'm gonna walk right over here. Now, this is our property line right here where the yellow wire is. I'll explain that in another video. Um, this gentleman, our neighbor, has some of it cleared. And then further on, you can see that you can't even see through the forest. It's what we like to call the Arkansas jungle. Now, there's that, and then there's this, the cleared, okay? So that's a big difference. 
but of course what that left us with was lots and lots of logs. So our first option while we were raising tiny little pullets into laying hens, before we were blessed with these wonderful already laying hens, we had considered making a log cabin and learning how to do that, um, because of course we've never done that before, out of this pile of... We have this pile, that pile in the back, that pile there, and many, many more piles all over the property that we were considering making a chicken log house. However, because God is so good and he gave us those laying hens um, much quicker than we could build a log cabin, we decided instead to take a look around on our property and figure out what do we have already that we could repurpose into a chicken coop. And I encourage you, because of lumber prices, because of budget reasons, because of resourcing, um, take a look around on your property and just see what you have. You just don't know what you have sometimes. Let me introduce you to the brains of the operation. My husband is well, often the... Experience of the operation. <laughs> the experience. Often the brains too. And often the um, uh, vision. So when we took a look at this project, uh, he was the one that said, there it is. There's our chicken coop. And then once he pointed it out as a chicken coop, I can see it from there. But he often sees it first. Okay, so we have primed the entire outside, including a lot of the underneath, thanks to little people, which is super great. Huh, Maddie? Thanks, Bill. Yeah. <laughs> um, we use a killed oil primer, and what's great about that is it's going to seep in and really, hopefully, protect the wood because here in Arkansas, it's very wet. Very not what we're used to, but we can get oil-based primer, and um, so hopefully it'll protect it quite a bit. Um, Solomon replaced both sides that were uh, kind of soggy and rotten and all that good stuff. Um, he also put this piece of trim on here. Um, yeah. So it's coming along. The wife patched this with some caulking, which, you know, it's a chicken house. So yeah. it's going to keep them mostly dry, keep them out of the weather, that kind of thing. It'll be good. But um, we'll get painting it. Hi. It'll be nice and beautiful. We'll show you what that looks like here in just a little bit. Just say exactly what you said. I don't want to be a chicken. I don't want to be a duck. So I guess I'm a goose. <laughs> show them your goose. Goose. <laughs>
While the girls drilled pre holes to screw the slats onto the chicken ladder, the boys were removing the nails out of the repurposed shelf. I believe this piece came off of our stairwell when we were ripping everything off the stairs on the inside. After all of the slats were painted and holes were drilled in them, the girls attached them to the newly painted chicken ladder that the boys did. Well, I am trying to touch up the white on the trim. Like, I don't know if it's you could like see it or not. Square. But there's just a thin layer of white, and so it still looks somewhat brown. And I'm just making it to where it looks white. Like so. And I'm wearing hey, plastic hey. gloves because we were using oil-based paint, and I don't want to have to wash the <laughs> oil-based paint off. It is a long process and you have to use paint thinner if it's oil-based paint. Otherwise your hands still look like this even after you've washed them. gotten it all painted and we are looking to do hen boxes now again whether you're looking at budget issues or you're looking at inflation issues or you just don't really want to go to the store right now to get anything else you scrounge around and you use what you can so here's what we've got here's the opening and closing um, hen box door right so it it uh, see that's closed and then when you grab this handle you pull it open. See, it's got a little, yeah, it's a little dirty in there. Thanks, honey. You're so awesome. Um, I was going to let the chickens clean it out because yeah. they'll keep what they want and throw out, scratch out the rest. Yeah. See how it kind of opens up to an angle there. And now all we're going to do is we're going to use these handy dandy baskets I got for something else some other time. We're going to put them down in there. I don't know which way let's see yeah like that and then I'll show you from the side so you can kind of see when you shut it they will be in the bottom and then when you peek in their entry hole here you can see them there sitting in the tray right daddy go ahead and pull that open so you can see from the inside what happens here so this little section the whole section is gonna pull open see and what you're gonna be able to do is clean it out and get to the eggs. Pretty nifty. All right, again, using what we have laying around, these are some of the things we collect. So when we take apart something, we keep the hinges and we keep any handles. This one happens to be new, probably got it out of one of our dad's stuff. It probably got bought for some project and then not, and not used. Or we found it in some box of random things that we picked up for a dollar at an auction. These are the kind of things that when you're doing projects like this, come in super handy because you don't have to go to the store. You've already bought it super cheap. I know a lot of people who are minimalists 
and I'm all with it. I don't particularly like a whole lot on my walls, but when it comes to minimalism, I like to spend the minimal amount of money on a project, and so I will reuse a hinge and a handle that I have out of a box of things in our shop. And for the most part, the shop is pretty well organized. We have shelves of boxes and things that... Um, at least uh, mostly. At least mostly. So, again, reuse what you found somewhere else. Here we are reusing another thing. This piece of, of 2x4, actually, was trimmed off of a 2x4 that Tim was fitting onto redecking a trailer. And so what Solomon is now doing is this tiny little piece of 2x4, he's going to use it as trim around our door. All right, here we are with a pile of... Uh, random miscellaneous things we've kept over the years. So I guess a friend of mine asked me recently, what do I collect? I collect things to build with, um, but only things that I know I'm going to actually build with. This is the pile. I keep it very well organized. This is hinges and eye bolts and eye bolt related things. Hinges and eye bolt related things. See, I've got every kind of eye bolt imaginable. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these eye bolts and we're going to put it in the hen door to hold it open and also to hold it closed. Okay, so it is to a point where we can move it to where it's gonna go. So just so you can know, we used this little eye bolt, ran a little string, so when you open this, open it, Daddy. There's a lock so you can't. Right, lock so you can't push it open because the chickens will push it open. Pull it up, pull the string through. The weight on the string will hold it open. Doesn't take much. And voila. Now, this lock, also something that we probably got in a box of stuff at an auction or from some other project or took apart from some other something that we've taken apart, cleaned up, etc. And so this little block inside here will keep the door from closing through and pushing on the, on the hinges. So lift the weight up, feed the string through, lock the door safe from predators and if you wanted to take one extra step you could also take off the ladder 
Solomon's gonna add a tiny little nail here. And basically what that is gonna be for is to hold the string out of the way. So again, unlock, open the door, pull the weighted string. And, oh, we lost a piece of string. The staples weren't long enough? All right, well, we'll restaple it or screw it or something, but there you go. So now we will pick it up with the tractor and take it where it goes. Solomon. 